Hi, this is a tutorial on a product called AG Cloud that's delivered from Bit9, a company based in Korea that develops a graph database. To access it, you go to agcloud.bit9.net and then you sign up. And then after you have an email address and you've set a login ID, you can connect to the AG Cloud server. And when you first connect, you can add a new project and you can choose to start from scratch here with uh, understanding graph and cipher and going through several tutorials. Uh, in fact, we'll start with this tutorial today because it's already populated. It already has data in the graph. And so it allows us to have a look at the viewer much quickly, much more quickly. So if we launch the viewer, it will immediately show us information about the graph and confirm that there is in fact data in the graph. This is the number of nodes in total. And we can see we have two types of nodes. We have labeled movie nodes and labeled person nodes. And we have multiple different types of edges. In total, we have 502 edges. And uh, we also have many, many properties relating to these nodes. At any point, we can hit refresh. If we change our graph, this will update the information here. So that's the information that's in our graph. Now, how do we view it? Well, one way is we can put in open cipher queries into this command box. But if we're not so familiar with open cipher yet, we can just choose something here and it will populate in the query editor a command that will allow us to view what we're looking at. So if we hit execute there, well, what, what I asked it for there was I asked it to show me every node. So this will show every single node in the database. If we want to, to view it more clearly, we can hit that expand button. And now we have every node. Um, as with all databases that are busy, sometimes there are so many that you really have to zoom in and choose the data very selectively in what you view. Otherwise, you just get overwhelmed with a, a rat's nest of information. But we have the information there and we, we can see that there seems to be two different colors. It turns out that the movies happen to be painted that color. We can change it to say yellow and the people are, are colored. We can change that to say green. So now we can, we can, uh, we can see, we can identify immediately that the, the ratio of, uh, of people to movies is as it appears. We can also change the size of nodes if we choose. So we choose a node and then choose its size. And you can see that it'll change the size. We can also, decide to what's going to be displayed on the node. For instance, we could say instead of having names, we could just choose to say when the actor was born. So, so these are all properties of the particular node I've clicked. That's person, this is movie. So these are all available properties of, of movie. So let's go back to person and change it back to name. Fine, so that's, that's just uh, having a quick look at nodes. And then if I want to examine a particular node, I can click on it and it'll give me the information below. Uh, as much information as there is. Now, in this case, there are very few properties in the node, but properties can be up to several megabytes in size for complicated and busy graphs. Okay, if we want to instead, if we want to see the actual connectivity between the nodes, we can choose an edge label. We can choose to show them all, which may become a bit of a rat's nest in, a, in a, even a moderately sized graph. But um, there are ways and tricks to minimize and uh, to look at fewer things. For instance, we could have just chosen this wrote, um, this wrote command instead, and then we can see we have a much more manageable type of graph. But let's go on. Let's let's stick with the entire graph. So we'll just view the entire graph again, and um, to get more real estate here, we can click this again. So this is our entire graph. Now down at the bottom here, we can see that we have different layouts and each of these layouts reveals a different type of structure about the data. Um, if the data is very hierarchical, for instance, then this will exhibit that hierarchy of data. Um, and uh, if the data is, uh, is very um, modular and if it's separated into various clusters, we'll be able to see that by, by showing by seeing that the, the clusters are actually not connected to each other. You might see it from that graph, or you'd certainly see it from a graph like this. And we'd be able to see that there are clusters of isolated groups, as there were in the example of rote, for instance. So the default is this Cose Bilkent 
COSI actually stands for compound spring embedder, and it's just a, a way of modeling the graph as if each of the connection was a spring and each of the nodes repelled each other. And it just gives us a nice spacing. It's a quite a compact uh, display and it is our default. So if you hit refresh, you'll always get, irrespective of what you chose in the past, you'll end up getting a COSI Bill Kent um, uh, visualization of the graph. So what can we glean from this? Well, we can see how the various players, the, the various actors are concerned or the various people are concerned with the movies. Um, if we if we choose a different layout, if we choose, for instance, concentric, we glean a little bit more information. Uh, in a concentric view, the elements or the nodes around the edges are not so busily connected. As you can see, they only have one connection here. These these various people, like Audrey Tatu, has one connection, appears in one movie in our database. And as we move towards, more towards the centre, we can see that we have busier and busier actors and movies so this uh the matrix will uh, will be very busy from our perspective it'll have lots of actors named and producers and writers and similarly we can we can see that the busiest five nodes in our in our graph are, are these these four movies and this particular actor so what else can we do we'll just pick that particular one actor there and we can for instance we can grab him uh tom hanks and pull him out here and just that node himself has come along, but we can actually pull out not just the not just the node himself, but we can connect all the nodes that he is connected to. So we can pull that out like that. So now we have immediately some sort of representation of the various movies that he's directly connected to. And if we click it again, we can pull again. And now we have uh, things that are what's left behind are even more remotely connected things to Tom Hanks. And if we keep on doing this, we can see that we're pulling out more and more stuff. So we're, uh, what's left behind now is even more remotely connected from Tom, Tom Hanks. And we do it once more. And we can see that these, these last remaining nodes are most distantly connected. So let's, this, this is Tom over here, as you can see down at the bottom. And somebody over here, I don't know who it will be. River Phoenix. Okay, so we have Tom and River Phoenix. So the... the this allows us to see that in this graph that they're the two, that, that a person that's the most remotely connected from Tom Hanks is River Phoenix. Um, so when, when would you ever need to know anything like this? Well, imagine that our graph, for instance, is a network and we want to test latency across the network. Then it's really useful to pick nodes that are far apart um, so that we get a genuine feel for the latency in the entire network. Or for instance, say we were picking characters for a jury uh, jury duty or something like that where we want us uh, to deter our uh, uh, collaboration between players then if we pick somebody over here and somebody over here then we know that they're uh, that they're they're not well connected um, similarly we can be pretty sure that these actors here have had very very little involvement with these movies over here um, so that's that's so let's let's actually just explore that so we have river phoenix at one end and we have um, Tom Hanks at the other. So if we go back to, for instance, our, if we go back, to, for instance, to our tutorial here uh, on one of the pages, it tells us how to see how people are connected. Um, and it talks about a thing called shortest path, which will find the shortest path between data. So let's, let's see if we can execute a shortest path between those two players. So I'll just grab this command here, which you can do with any of these commands. So I'll grab that command there. I'll copy it in here, pop it into the AG viewer. And the people I'm concerned about then are Tom Hanks and River Phoenix. So let's just put in Tom Hanks here. And then put in River Phoenix over here and see how they are actually connected. So manipulating graphs or dealing with graphs involves sometimes, some, mostly actually using open cipher. Uh, to, to do the queries, but sometimes you can just use the a com combination of the graph tools and OpenCypher to get much more meaningful information. So I'll just change this to the more hierarchical type view. And we can see here now that Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan both acted in You've Got Mail and um, Meg co-starred with Rob Ryan or blah, blah, blah and um, and so forth. So that's the that is in fact the shortest connection from Tom Hanks to River Phoenix in our database. Of course, our database is very incomplete. I'm sure if you're a film buff, you can probably 
know that there's a, a much shorter connection between them. Um, it's worth pointing out that in the acted in there, I could choose to show something else along the edge here. For instance, I could show that the roles that they played. So now I can see that Tom played the role of Joe Fox. Fine. So that's that's how we that's how we uh, we we do that. So let's go back to one of our other tutorials and let's have a quick look at what the tutorial looks like. So I'm going to delete this particular tutorial. Don't worry, we didn't create any data that's been deleted. Uh, you can hit delete all the time. It's only data that we might have added uh, during this exercise that gets deleted. So there's absolutely no problem. So now let's choose a a new a new graph. Say understanding graph and cipher, which is the first one. Um, so we'll immediately launch the AG Viewer uh, and we can see that in this we have nothing in this graph at all because in fact this graph is empty. We have put nothing in it. Uh, by the way, that's my name there, Joe Fagan. You can contact me anytime. I'd be more than happy to help you with any queries that you have. So this tutorial is to help you to understand graph databases and Cypher. The, the, the first thing we just we define a graph for you. A graph consists of nodes and edges and may, and, and keeps a track of their connections. That, that's what it's really about. So if we go into the next slide of the presentation, it'll tell us what properties and paths are. So a property is just stuff that's held in the node or the edge. So what's held in the, in the node could be the name, the ID, the serial number, the purchase date, any information under the sun, it can be it can be uh, it can be textual, it can be lists, it can be just about uh, any information that you choose. Just about anything you can hold in a spreadsheet, for instance, can can be an element of a node or a property of a node. Similarly, we can have properties along edges. Um, so, in, in addition to the label of the edge, which is follows, we can have properties like followed since or durations for the past five years or. Uh, really likes and a scale of likeliness or, or, or any other data. So that's what um, that's what properties do or what properties are. And if we look at the basic structure of the Cypher command language, a lot can be done with very little. In fact, the whole syntax of Cypher is very easy to understand. There are aspects of Cypher that are not so easy to understand, but the syntax when referring to nodes is quite straightforward. So the ASCII art is this. You have th this here is a simple node. It's represented by curly brackets. That's a node. This is also a node, but it's specifying that the label of the node is male. So just in the movies, we had label actor, excuse me, person and movie. Here we have in this graph, we we're going to have male and female. Um, so, so to get more sophisticated, we can. Sp this is another specification of a node, either for creating it or for finding it later. We can specify that we're referring to a node. That's what the two outside brackets mean. The colon in front of this indicates that the label on the node is female. And then the properties are inside these angled brackets. So the properties are age 25 and, and name is Fia. Those top three represent nodes with various degrees of specificity. This, on the other hand, represents two nodes connected by a squarely bracket, which is in fact a connection or an edge or a relationship. And it has a direction. It's in this case directed from this node to this node. It could be directed the other way. And in fact, it could be not existent at all. So that we have the concept of a bi-directional node where we're just not fussy about its connection. That's when we're trying to pattern match. Um, to be more specific here, so this is going to refer to a relationship and it's specifying a relationship from a female labeled node to a male labeled node and it says nothing about what the relationship is if we look down here then we're going to actually populate the relationship as well with something so we're going to say we want a relationship it's of the label follows and we're specifying a property inside the the uh, the relationship and that setting its duration to five so there we go. That's that's uh, the basic syntax of how we specify nodes and patterns inside inside Agents Graph, which is what's at the back of AG Cloud. Okay, so here we have code that will be able to create a very simple database, and let's have a look at the let's let's have a look at the code. So we want to create a male. His name is going to be Adam, and he's going to have an age of twenty five. 
This A here refers to this guy only up to the first semicolon. After that, that identifier disappears. But I can refer to that A, this particular node. I don't have to go searching for Adam or his age. I can just refer to him as A. Um, the next thing I'm creating here is another male called Bert, who has three properties in his, in his node. He's got an age and he's got an eye color. And then we, so we build our six nodes there, and then we start building relationships. So this, can, this is a, going to create a relationship between A and B. And these refer, must refer to thingies that we specified earlier. So A is that male and B is uh, Bert. So we're going to say that, we're going to say here that Adam follows Bert for the past five, whatever. And then we carry on in that way and we build a number of relationships. So if we just simply copy all of this code here, then we can go to our viewer, pop it into the query editor, paste it in, execute it, and that should create our graph. Now notice we didn't, uh, we didn't say show the graph, we didn't say anything, we just said go and create it. So now that it's created, we can hit refresh here and we can see that in fact we do have female and male nodes. We have um, 20 edges. In fact, we only have 10 edges, but in the concept of they mean bi-directional, we've got 20 kind of, if we're not fussy about direction, we have kind of 20 edges. And we have, uh, and they're all of the follows type. So let's see all the nodes first of all. So I click on that and that populates this query editor with show me nodes. And then we can see the nodes. And just as before, we can change what we see about them. So at the moment we're looking at, uh, sorry, if we if we go here, we can. I'll tell you what. Let's uh, expand the viewer here. We can go to. We can see that it's a male. We can change the color as before. We can change. You know, we want to see the age and not the name. Uh, we can change its size. So let's just go back to make those something sensible again. And um, if we want to see uh, not just the nodes, but we want to see the edges too, we can click on this here, which will say, "Show me." everything which is that's connected so we want any time a node is connected to another node via any relationship return all of it so these are node elements and we can see that we we receive this and this is our little mini social network it tells us who follows who so we can see that carl for instance follows fia and fia follows d there's only one instance of somebody following somebody back so in in this example our our edges are are directional and have a lot of meaning. If, for instance, this was sibling off, we, would, we wouldn't need to because if Eve is a sibling of Bert, then the, uh, the reciprocal relationship exists anyway. Whereas with follows, it doesn't, so I need to specify it specifically. So that's what a graph looks like. If we go back to, if we go back to the next um, piece of the... Oh, by the way, here, here, this is useful. If you ever want to just... If you get a bit lost and you want to start from scratch, this will delete everything. This is comments, by the way, just comments are written this way. And you can all write single line comments with double dash. And here this will match every node in the graph. Match N matches every single node. And then we delete N. We use the attach because you can't just delete a node if it's already attached to something. So you, when you want to delete a node, you must detach all its relationships as well. And that will do it automatically for you. So it'll go tear down all the relationships to the node. And then this will effectively delete the entire graph. Um, and then th these are various queries that you can execute. This, so rather than referring to as we before, this is just another way of doing the same thing that we did before. But it's a, a slightly more elegant way of writing cipher than the return asterisk, we can specify we want paths, so this will return paths. Now it's worth noticing, it's worth noting that not every query returns paths. Some queries return different information. For instance, say we wanted to, say we wanted to find, say we want to do something like this here, here we go. So this is going to match all the females and then sum their ages. So the output of this is, are not graph elements, they're not nodes, they're not paths or relationships, um, but we can still play with the data, we can still see the data. It doesn't appear in the graph because there's nothing to show, but, but it will appear in the table. So the sum of the ages is 78. So there you go, that's a good introduction to the uh, AG Cloud, uh, the AG Cloud Express, I should say. It's, it's free product to use. 
It's got lots and lots of capacity there. You can upload very complex graphs and play with them. It should run reasonably quickly as well. It's got a, a lot of oomph behind it. And um, it'll allow you to get familiar with OpenCypher and allow you perhaps to get familiar with our, our uh, Agents Graph Viewer, AG Viewer. So thank you very much for your attention. And once more, if you need to contact me, I'm joe.fagan at bt, uh, no, I'm joe.fagan at bit9.net. Thanks again.